The initial primitive bridges just resembled logs thrown over water and didn't seem very secure. But as technology has advanced, societies have actually started to build truly impressive structures. The Dangyang Kunshan Viaduct, which holds the record for the world's longest bridge in the Guinness Book of World Records, is an excellent example. There are locations, though, where bridges appear to be necessary but are absent. The Straits of Gibraltar is included in this. The Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea is connected by this, which is significant globally. About 200 large ships pass through them every day. It's an essential route for Mediterranean communication with the outside world. You are watching Why Aren't Africa and Europe Connected by a Bridge? Please take a moment to like and subscribe to Africa Info Hub. Without much delay, let's dive into the video. They became even more important after the official opening of the Suez Canal in 1869. The 100 miles long canal split Eurasia and Africa. And thanks to that ships no longer needed to sail around Africa. To get from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean and back. That saved them almost 5,000 miles of travel. But the Straits of Gibraltar have a different story. Both sides have wanted to be connected for a long time now. There's heavy ferry traffic between the Iberian Peninsula and Morocco. Meaning there is a need for passage through the straits. For example, building a passage would be good for tourism and the economy. Connecting Europe and Africa would only need a bridge about 9 miles long. Since the smallest distance across the straits is a bit over 8.5 miles. That's not too big for modern bridges. Does Europe not want to undertake such a project, or are they unable to do so? No one knows. But a real attempt was made long ago. Which was much more complicated than expected. Bridge and other projects to connect the coasts, were being developed in the early 20th century. And some were completely insane. In the late 1920s, German architect Hermann Sorgel developed the Atlantropa project. He wanted to connect Europe and Africa and make the latter's climate more suitable for Europeans. So, he suggested building a hydroelectric dam that would close the Straits of Gibraltar. An 18 miles long dam along the seafloor up to 1,050 feet deep. Seemed to the author completely plausible. The author's project would lower the Mediterranean's level to 656 feet in just a few decades. He would also build a second dam across the Dardanelles. This would stop water from the Atlantic Ocean from flowing into the Mediterranean Sea. So the water level would gradually increase by 5 feet per year. But that was too slow for Sorgel. He suggested pumping water along a special channel to the Sahara. Making an artificial sea there. The Gibraltar Dam alone could potentially generate about 50 gigawatts of energy. Which is over 50% of all of the US nuclear energy today. This can provide electricity to the nearby regions and fresh water for the Sahara. Making more agricultural land. Sorgal's plan would have connected electric lines from the Gibraltar Dam by highways and railroads. Making Europe and Africa a new part of the world. When the Nazis came to power in Germany. Sorgal tried to bring the project to their attention, but Hitler was not impressed. Moreover, he wasn't allowed to advertise his Atlantropa project anymore. So he only started talking about his ideas again after World War II. Many big manufacturers liked the project. Since they hoped to make much money from it. Despite that, the necessary sum of money was never found. Sorgal died in 1952, along with his fantastic Atlantropa. It's worth noting the project was mostly utopian. And its manifestation caused unrest in southern Europe. But there have been more realistic ideas for uniting the two continents. There have been proposals for various bridges and underground tunnels. But before we look at the most interesting ones. Let's see why it's so hard to do them. And why there have been only timid attempts at starting on paper. The problem is mostly geographic. And a big part is the depth of the strait. In some places, it's over 3,280 feet deep. In comparison. The world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, is 2,716 foot tall. 
imagine having to build supports even taller than that. Additionally, the world's tallest supports are in the Mala Viaduct at just 803 feet. We've never made supports as big as 2,700 feet. Another serious problem is the very strong current that is multidirectional. The lower part flows westward and the upper to the east. Considering the depth and current. Building and serving a classical supported bridge is tough. And you need to consider possible natural disasters. The cost of this project would be billions of dollars. And many European experts are convinced it's simply technically unrealistic. But despite that, in the 1990s, Chinese-American engineer Tune In Lin proposed a bridge across the strait. He wanted to connect Europe and Africa through two points. A peculiarity of his bridge was the unprecedented span of 3.1 miles. As an independent consultant, Lin attracted an engineering company from San Francisco, created computer models and researched the structural configuration, roughness systems, and aerodynamic characteristics. Overall, it was taken very seriously. The project was evaluated at $15 billion, but remained on paper as usual. Later in 2004, American architect Eugene Su proposed another extremely unusual bridge. He designed a floating bridge whose segmented construction is similar to a spy. The architect aimed to create an artificial island almost 3.1 miles across. It would have wind and water turbines. That could provide significant electricity to Morocco and southern Spain. Part of the bridge would go under the water, so ships could pass over halfway through. If Eugene Su's surprising bridge had been built, it definitely would have been one of the region's main tourist attractions. But it didn't come to pass. Ideas about building a tunnel under the straits have been bouncing around for a long time. For example, the tunnel under the English Channel is 32 miles long. Over three times longer than the Strait of Gibraltar. The first ideas of such a plan appeared 150 years ago. Now there are problems with finances and construction debt. So, if bridges don't work, what about something else? In the 1930s, Spain returned to the tunnel plan. But it quickly became clear that the Strait's base was made of very hard rock. So digging a tunnel would be too difficult. Another difficulty was that the strait is about 3,000 feet deep near the Rock of Gibraltar. And we've never made a tunnel so deep. But despite previous failures, Spain wasn't in a rush to turn away from a tunnel. In 1979, a combined Spain-Morocco committee for completing a new project was formed. Additional complications that the builders would encounter during the research became known. Midway through the strait are the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, which creates seismic danger. They tried to complete the project for 40 long years, but finally closed it because the two built parts collapsed, and there was difficulty with maintenance. The fault was filled with two clay canals, making the construction even harder. In 2021, the press once again began writing about an underwater tunnel connecting Europe and Africa. This time, Great Britain is quite interested. They must look for new trade connections after leaving the European Union. The construction of a tunnel from Gibraltar to Tangier, Morocco's largest port, is a logical step. Now it's not clear who would control the borders and who would pay for it. Though in any case, it doesn't matter yet, since there's no definite information about the project. There's a chance that something will appear sooner or later. If you believe the forecast. Africa will be one of the world's most quickly developing areas in the coming decades. With such development, a bridge or tunnel connecting the two continents will become especially important. What do you think of our video? In the comment section below, let us know whether you support Team Bridge or Team Tunnel. Concerning the proposed crossing between Europe and Africa. If you enjoyed this video, tell your friends about it and hit the like button. Also, share with friends on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter.